What's going on, y'all? It's your boy GP, and you're rocking with me on the Aqua Method Podcast. Thank y'all for listening. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, Grasshopper GP. Um, Instagram is also Grasshopper GP, spelled normally. Uh, you are listening to this on Grasshopper GP Official. That's Grasshopper GP with three S's and Grasshopper because when I made the account, I couldn't spell. So, uh, so I appreciate all the likes and the views and the listens and all that stuff. Now you're probably wondering, GP, you said there's gonna be videos. You did two video podcasts. There's no videos this time. Well, your boy GP has a very tight schedule. I'll be traveling. I'll be out of the, out of town for a couple of days, uh, celebrating the New Year's in a whole nother state. So I had to get this podcast up and upload it. I didn't have time for the compression and for the editing. So no video this time. I apologize, but thank y'all for rocking with me regardless. Um, I'm doing this once again live at the comic book shop. So thank you to Mr. Jeff for letting me do it here. Um, and speaking of the comic book shop, I am joined by Mr. Jeff's homeboy, Dan. He also uh, assists Mr. Jeff in uh, running of the um, of the comic book shop, yep. and he does a great job. So what's going on, Dan? Oh, it's, it's going. I had this just dropped on me, so I'm psyched though. I mean, right. I love being on. I've been on a few podcasts before. Yeah, this, man. So yeah. yeah I, I had I had things lined up and none of them worked out. Yeah, that's showbiz. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's how it is. And it, I, I I dropped it on uh, people's laps just like uh, all of a sudden, you know. So, yeah, it's all good. You know, get so, it out, um, get it out, get content for your people. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. But uh, no, it's real good, man. So like, this is very spontaneous. How you feeling right now? I'm all right. I mean, I'll be uh, jumping back and forth between right. working and. This right. so I'm good, but you know, hey, doing I've the been same. doing stand up comedy for ten years. Right, I wanted to talk to you about that. I wanted to get to you on that, um, because I, I did a show at the comic book shop, mm-hmm. and uh, what's his name? Who was Adam it? Warrock was Adam headliner. Warrock. I didn't want to say his name wrong. Adam Warrock was uh the headliner, and I performed with him. And before we performed, you did a stand-up comedy I, bit. Yeah, did about 10 minutes right. opening. So. And I didn't even know that you was into that. Oh, yeah, I've been doing it yeah. since uh, 05. Not only were you into it, you was really, really good. And it surprised me. And, um, like, it was really, really good. Yeah, I've been hitting uh, been all over the south. Um, I did a, did a show once in Canada. That That's was awesome. In, that was interesting. Uh, and I did a... Uh, but mostly I've been hitting, because I'm a huge nerd, uh, I've been hitting... Uh, I've been hitting Comic Cons, and also I got into the Brony Con circuit too. Right, so right, yeah, because right. uh, that was a weird turn of events that right. ended up with me getting slightly tipsy with a pony on Bourbon Street. There you <laughs> go. I mean, that sounds that sounds about right though. That's part of the course in Bourbon Street. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, it's just it's always funny going. Hey, what did you do today? I got drunk on daiquiris with a My Little Pony. <laughs> there you go. Yep. There you go. So how do you get into the um? You'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. And, of course, we should get a second person here, but right. unless we could pause. <laughs> right. No, it's good. I got you. I got okay, you. Okay, cool. But, um, but yeah, like I said, he runs the shop just like Mr. Jeff does, so he's going to be bouncing in and out of the show. Um, But, yeah, man, like I said, I'm, I apologize for no... Uh, no video this time. I just had to get, I had to get something out there, and I had to put it up online. And uh, I knew I wasn't gonna make the deadline um, if I put it, uh, if I had video. So, uh, so, but thank y'all anyway for rocking with me. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say, you can also uh, reach me at grasshoppergp at yahoo.com. That's the email if you want to do any types of sponsorships or any types of advertisements. Uh, check me out on grasshoppergp at yahoo.com. Uh, or if you had anything nice to say about the podcast, like I really appreciate all the listeners. So, um, so Dan's back. Yeah, I asked you, how did you get into uh, stand up? Um, I've always loved comedy. Um, mm-hmm. I had a really bad part of my life early on, you know, especially around uh, twelve when mm. so- something I don't really want to talk about happened to me. But it I was could, could it. it was really bad, and I really got to a low point in my life, mm-hmm. and. That's when Comedy Central really took off. Right. And I and I mean and also I discovered Jerry Seinfeld oh, yeah, on TBS. Mm-hmm. But the big thing was I found a rock we went in my mom brought us to <laughs> brought us to TJ Maxx mm-hmm. and there was a dollar bin that had a Rodney Dangerfield C D. Right. I picked that up, I listened to it so many times. And then that's what got you into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's and cool, man. More customers. Be right, right back. Right. This is the most chaotic podcast yeah. I've ever. 
this is the most chaotic podcast of all time, of, uh, especially in the um, the short duration that I've been doing it. Uh, episode 25 will undoubtedly be the craziest podcast because he's going to be running in and out because this is a very busy day um, for him. They got, uh, again, I'm live at the comic book shop and they have uh, Warhammer, they have all types of games going on. And on the uh, on the right side, on my right side, there's a bunch of card games. I think in Magic over there. I think it's Magic over there. So yeah, that's what's going on. And he's got to ring people up. He's got to set up the tournaments and stuff like that. So he's gonna be bouncing in and out. But that, no, like when I did the show, I did the show. I think a year ago with uh, Adam Warrock, and he lit it up before. It was really good to have him do his comedy uh, bit before, and it was really really um. It really livened the mood and got everybody ready for the for the music that was about to show up. But you were saying that you got a Rodney Dangerfield CD. Yes, and then after that, Jerry Seinfeld. After I'd watched the show, mm-hmm. and then then the DVD of his retirement special. Because if you remember, right after the show ended, he retired for about ten years. Right. And retired all his material. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shows also, by the way, how prolific he is at writing. Because mm-hmm. I saw him the year he came back and had a whole new set. I saw him this year, which was five years later. Yeah. Completely you saw him at the Hyman? At the, I saw him at the Hyman. Okay. Completely new set for, uh, there, too. That's good. It, in ten years, I've only written about an hour of material. Mm-hmm. That's three different hours over the right. past Right, day. right, right, right. And it's just like, that's a whole extra hour in in five years. Well, that's talk about that. What insane. is the hardest part of being a comedian? Oh, in your In your uh, so- estimation. There's so much. I mean, and the main thing is it has to do with our ta- the talent the comedian has. Mm-hmm. I mean, some comedians can just riff. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. They can just go off the crowd. That's great. Of course, it makes it so that if the crowd isn't very lively, isn't into it, it's hard to do that. Mm-hmm. But which is why you need material in the background. Right, right, right. Um, you know, I. Myself, I have a real talent for writing. That's why I'm in journalism also, you mm-hmm. know, writing f- for various papers and stuff like that. Um, I remember Carolyn Picard. She's a, from Lu- here in Louisiana. She used to open for Ron White, a bunch of other stuff. She wants, I, my, my third show ever, open mic, third mm-hmm. show ever, she was just there and decided to perform. Okay. She saw me perform. Said, "You got, you're a really rough, kid. You got no personality, no mm. stage presence, but I can tell you are a solid writer. Mm. You're one of the best new writers I've seen. That's good. So, and that that's writing is a, a lot of people say writing material is the hardest part. That's what comes easier for me. Part of my problem is getting the connection with the crowd. Mm-hmm. I have I have Asperger's, so I have a harder time connecting with people, okay. and it can sometimes spill into the performance. But on the other hand, sometimes when I'm just in the, like, when I can't see people, like, when the lights are low, I can get in it. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's when I see the people that I, it's not like stage fright, it's a problem connecting. Right, no, I can understand that, I can understand that. And that's, I mean, it's rare for me, because I usually do pretty well, especially now that I've uh, started hitting comic book, sci-fi, brony conventions. The right. crowds love the stuff I do because it's all pretty... I, I do some nerdy stuff, but it's very very general audience stuff, mm-hmm. too. How do, how do you know... When do you know that you've connected with the crowd? Um, do you get a feeling? Oh, every, every comic... It's usually you have one, maybe two minutes. Mm-hmm. That And two minutes is pushing it. Mm-hmm. The crowd should be connected with you and into it and laughing and listening. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you could feel it. I mean, it just it, you, if you listen to comedians talk, you always hear that crowd was dead or that crowd just sucked. Every comic can feel. Sometimes bad comics will just say, "Oh, that crowd sucked," and everyone else is like, "No, nah, I had a good time." But sometimes there are crowds that. First, they show up at shows and then just act like they don't want to be there, and it's the really? weirdest thing. Yeah, yeah that sucks, it, man. It's, I did I did roadieing for some local bands back in high school. Uh-huh. I've never seen that in music. I've never seen it in poetry. Yeah, comedy is the weirdest thing, but also it's like uh, there's this uh, comedian Kurt Metzger writes for uh, Amy Schumer. Okay, um, he always says he writes for Amy Schumer's show or for the show. Okay, yeah, her show Inside yeah. Amy Schumer. Um, he always says that. Comedy 
comedy is always treated as the like the lowest art form. It's below like mimes and magicians. Ah, that's, yeah. It's because that's everybody thinks they can do it. Right. Everybody Every, thinks they're funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody thinks they're funny. Yeah. But almost no one actually is. Right. Because you're funny with your friends. You yeah. get up in front of a bunch of idiots strangers. that yeah. don't know you. Drunk strangers. Yeah, drunk idiots. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to do as well as you think you are. It's not. And I mean, it, and he has a point to it because I mean, there's so many people that. Like, oh, well, who's that guy? Um, one of the guys from Jersey Shore, out of nowhere, just decided he wanted to be a stand-up comic. Uh, uh, and everyone was just like, what? I think Vinny. Vinny, there yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Screech is, <laughs> right, trying to be a, right, is right, still right. trying to be a stand-up right. comic. You know, it's just like, it, 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 it's the fallback. It's below reality. If, if the fallback for reality TV stars and sitcom stars is yeah. stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah. That's disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. And if the if stand up comedy leads to sitcom, that's good. That but that means that it's below. Oh, uh, it's below sitcom. Yeah, I can dig it. Even well, though we've had such amazing, I mean, like George Carlin mm-hmm. was just, I, I got you know like Lenny Bruce, like we wouldn't have a lot of our freedoms of speech without Lenny Bruce. Yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I could, I could dig it. The one of the reasons I started this podcast was because of a comedian. Yeah. Yeah, named uh, Bill Burr. Bill Burr is great. He's phenomenal, and he he does a podcast by himself, and uh, and it's hilarious. And he's just talking about what's going on in his day, you know. But um, I, that so he's one of the main inspirations for me doing this. And what what inspires me is that like. I was scrambling to get somebody, and I'm lucky that I got you here. I was scrambling to get somebody, but he's doing it by himself, and he's filling up oh. an hour by himself. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's entertaining. You know what I mean? So that's really impressive. So Well, that's the thing about stand-up. Yeah. With the exception of, like, some duo groups, like Stella. Yeah. Well, that's a trio group. Okay. You know, stuff like that. Or uh, Garfunkel and Oates. You're mostly by yourself, and mm. you are talking. That, that's another thing. A lot of um, it's like you're talking to yourself. You are actually. Yeah. The the interesting thing is, during. Do you remember the Jerry Seinfeld controversy that happened this summer? No. About when he said, which the funny thing is, Chris Rock said this like two months earlier. Nobody batted an eye. Uh-huh. But he said, I don't do colleges anymore. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, PC, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone yeah. just wants to be offended. Right, 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 right. There were a lot of people that were writing blogs about how how he's wrong and they know more, which is just stupid that some yeah, a bunch of blogging open micer knows more than you know right. one of the most definitive and successful stand up comics of all time. Right. I don't know. Um, but the thing is, a lot of their arguments were that comedy has left him behind because comedy isn't a monologue anymore; it's a dialogue, and that just yeah. shows how they don't know right. what they're talking about because. The thing about stand-up comedy, and it's always been like that, is to make the audience think they're involved when they're not. Right. Robin Williams, the late great Robin Williams, right, right, right. Would everyone would go? He's just making stuff up. He's interacting with the crowd. He's doing. Mm. Or Lisa Lampanelli. She's always, always going off the crowd. Mm. That's all canned stuff. That's right. all stuff they've come up with as responses to what anybody says. Mm-hmm. You are actually just. Like, if they were a ventriloquist, they would just throw their voice. Because your response, nine times out of ten, will most likely be exactly what they want you to say. Mm -hmm. It's a form of performance. And the thing is, by crowd working, they make you think you are involved and you're not. Right. And that's... It's an art form that most people don't look at as an art, which is sad. I've (laughs) talked about this a bunch of times on the podcast. Like... People just want to be upset. Mm-hmm. They just want to be. I told. I said it before. They want to be the Malcolm X, the Martin Luther King, of whatever it is that they care about. They just. They want to be the one to be like to have a banner that says like, "I am mad at this. I am the reason why this should change. Look at me. Don't look at the, the situation that I want to change. Look at me saying that this is bad." Yeah. Well. Yeah. The. the okay. Um. I mean. Talk about that. I just lost my train of thought because a customer came up. <laughs> um, and I'll be with you in a sec. Um, the interesting thing about that is, did you hear about Tumblr's big explosion after the Civil War, Captain America Civil War trailer came out? What the, what, no, what, what happened, whatever. This was absolutely hilarious. Uh, someone's like, I love the, the trailer. I just wish there were a few changes. Somebody took a picture that mm-hmm. was of... 
Cap, but, um, Scarlet Witch, mm -hmm. and Hawkeye. And they they really crappily photoshopped in Quicksilver between Cap and Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. And they're like, and then tumbling through a fit, mm -hmm. yelling about how look how racist this, these Marvel fans are, and how awful because they're cutting Sam Wilson out. Mm. They don't want a strong black character in mm. there, so they replace him with a skinny white guy. Right. Oh, blah, blah, blah. and someone went and posted the original picture again. Mm -hmm. There's nobody there. Right. It is just those three characters, right. and they put Quicksilver in. Mm -hmm. But people thought right. that Sam was in that scene. Right. They just they wanted to be mad. They wanted to be mad. Right. Yeah. And I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. That's that's, that's a, a a plaguing issue that is becoming more prevalent, and uh, I don't know if worldwide society probably, but uh, definitely in American society. People just want to be upset about things. People just want to be mad, and they want to they want to showcase their anger. And like there are things that that you should be legitimately upset about. That makes sense. But a lot of things people just just want to complain about, and it's and it's sickening, and it's and it's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. The the amount of creativity you have in this fake controversy, these false causes, you could be spending on more important things. And uh, in, in ways that can uh, better society and stuff like that. It just, like, I'm going to talk to him about this when he gets back, but like, I feel like if I was a comedian, I'd be really scared. Like, I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know what I can say because I, no, I can't make no racist jokes, you know, because, like, it's just a joke. I don't really feel like this, or I can't make any homophobic jokes or transphobic jokes or jokes against uh, vegetarians or jokes against uh, animal rights groups like obviously you don't really feel this way but you know like the comedian's job in my opinion is to say what we're all thinking what we're all afraid to say they're supposed to be the vessels of truth in a satirical and parody type of manner they're supposed to be the vessels of truth and if you take away if you make them scared to say what they really want to say then you lose that and Comedy is a is a beautiful art form, and it shouldn't lose that that magic. It shouldn't lose that part of it, you know. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, like I can and I can understand, cause like every college has a, a myriad of groups that all claim to be the uh, the premier group of some sort of issue. And and again, there's issues. Of course, there should be there should be gay rights, and there should be civil rights, and women's rights, and all that stuff, but. But everybody needs to be able to just sit back and take a joke once in a while, you know, um, because comedians, because like Dan Levitard always calls sports entertainment the funhouse mirror in which society looks at itself. That's comedy, you know. Comedy is just a mirror. We just need to sit back and look at ourselves and just laugh, you know, because, you know, life's funny. But, um... Yes. But yeah. Anyway, I am back. Yeah, yeah. You're I'm back. not the king of multitask by the end of the yeah. night. That's good. No, that's good. Right. Yeah. Now, Mr. Jeff normally has to do that too, but you've done it more times already than he has to do it. Yeah. Well, most people when they see Jeff's busy, they give him room. Right. But I don't have the year, the over a decade of just keeping everybody in line right, <laughs> that right, he right, is. Right. But yeah, we were talking about uh, political correctness and censorship and stuff like that. How you feel about that? I'm completely well. There's a difference between like because a lot of people conflate political correctness with being a good person, right? And they're two separate things. Yeah, being politically correct that's nice sometimes. Mm -hmm. It like I mean, just calling someone African American as opposed to you know the N word, right? Is yeah, there we go. That's right. politically correct and decent, right? However. Somebody getting like I I I just saw some. There's somebody that a friend of mine is friends with online. He she they, she call he she calls herself they mm -hmm. refuses to identify as any gender. Okay. And I'm just like, and people get mad when they someone says he or she okay. to her. And I'm just like, 
Okay, but come on, people. Right, right. I mean, you're making it really difficult on everybody else. Yeah, I'm just like when when you and then of course there's the other kin people. Have you heard about them? No, I have oh. not. <laughs> Prepare me to open your world up to the what the fuck. The that other is. kin. It, I'm already okay. mad. So <laughs> I'm already upset other kin with believe that on the inside they are actually animals, not people. Okay. And their other kin is so, like how. Trans people are another gender on the inside. Right, right, right. They are another species on the inside. Okay. This is where... It, I mean, I, I keep saying it. The Both sides of political arguments have become the parodies of them from the 90s. Yeah. What was made fun of, of this is what will be, they will become. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody's saying that, you know, people on the far left are just completely like these... Have gone just overboard of right. like Super everything hippies. is political, so politically correct that it's locking everything down. Right. While the everyone on the right is becoming almost fascist. Mm. That's what it's become. That was the jokes back in the nineties, mm. and now they're real. And it's, it's just it's, like it's gross, man. Yeah. I, f- I feel. And like then of course the seventy percent of America, the sixty to seventy percent of America that are in the middle, just going, "This is nuts," are right. getting drowned out by the crazy. The fifteen yeah. percent on each side that yeah. are just crazy. Man, it's a bunch it's like, of lunacy on both sides, man. Yeah. And I, but you know, I feel like, and I, I feel like there's like this invisible force that is making people fight each other, and they're just sitting back laughing at how stupid both arguments are. Interesting enough, there is something like that in sociology. It's called the spiral of silence. Mm-hmm. It's in sociology and a lot of communication theory. Mm-hmm. It's where um, the majority silences the minority in a group. However. Recent studies over the past 20 years, since the rise of the internet, Mm -hmm. the internet has created segmented groups where everybody segments themselves from everybody else. So, and they segment themselves with people that they agree with. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is those people become the majority within their own little group, right. silencing anyone who goes, hey, that's a little nuts. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is that majority starts proselytizing their viewpoints and pulling more people in. Right, right, and right. eventually it gets large enough that it's not a majority, but it's loud enough that the majority thinks, oh, I'm alone in this. Mm-hmm. And then you get the spiral of silence where the minority is silencing the majority because of the openness of the internet. Right, right, right. It, of course, that's all theory, high-minded theory. But it's yeah, no, it's good though. No, yeah. I can dig it. I can, I can, I mean, I can see where you're coming from with it. Yeah, but it's just, I don't know, man. We, there's got to be some sort of balance between well, between that, right, you know, being a decent person and being able to say what you want to say. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, that's what most comedians like. Are if saying, you I mean. say a gay jo- as a comedian, if you say a gay joke, that don't mean that you're homophobic. No, heck no. And the right. best thing is, I have been I have been in comedy shows mm-hmm. where the blacks and white comics, the black and white comics, mm-hmm. will tell racist joke offs. Right. The black comics will just make fun of white people in the mm-hmm. most racist ways, and the white com- and we all love it. It's, right. The thing is, a joke like. It's weird now that comics are the only ones that realize now that sometimes a joke is just a joke. Right. Like sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. You right. Know? I just hope that all comedians and I feel like if you if you're a comedian you have you already have thick skin mm-hmm. and you already have a thick Oh yeah, you quit. A thick if you, a thick will. You quit pretty early if you don't have a thick skin. Right. You have a thick constitution, you know, you know that I'm going to do this anyway. So mm-hmm. like you're going to be mad at me. You might even sue me, but like there's, I don't care. I, there's I, something I, that I want to say this because I have the right to say it. In every in every art I've seen, if you're doing it for the fame and the fortune, you will almost never get that. Mm-hmm. It's when you're doing it for love and doing it for 10, 15, 20 years, making nothing mm-hmm. and working hard at it. That's when you. I mean, I've been doing it 10 years. I'm. I almost broke through. Like mm-hmm. I was starting, I was almost in at the at the comedy at the comedy clubs. I was mm-hmm. almost get, I was getting gig after gig after gig. I was doing well. Then I got hit by a car in '09 and broke my back and mm-hmm. spent six. You spend a few months not performing, mm-hmm. almost nobody remembers you. Yeah. I spent that year off after I broke my back. I went back to Baton Rouge. 
three comics remember me. Mm-hmm. Because everyone else that was there were completely new. No one, none of the bookers were the same. I mean, heck, Funny well, Bone is gone now, and it's just it's a new club. Well, that's part of your story, yeah. though, and that's going to make you stronger. Well, I broke my back mm-hmm. two months before a big gig I had in Baton Rouge. Mm-hmm. We were performing at a sci-fi convention, me and a couple other comics. Mm-hmm. And uh, I get called by... Uh, Susie Seeger, she's a British comic. Okay. Yeah, and uh, from Baton Rouge. And uh, she was one of the comics I was performing with, along with uh, Robert Rao, who's and Johnny Worsham, who run the show at uh, a lot of times. Robert Rao's the main guy for <laughs> for uh, Delete Comedy in, yeah. uh, in Baton Rouge. Okay. Uh, but we were all performing at this science fiction con. Susie calls me up in the hospital bed. I am... Broken back, narrowly avoid paralyzation. Mm-hmm. Pretty much can't. Like, I'm in a back brace, in a bed, mm-hmm. half drugged up. I've already written five minutes of material. That's good. Susie calls me and goes, if you, don't, if you can't make it, it's fine. It's like, I will make that gig. <laughs> Seven weeks later, my dad drove me to Baton Rouge, helped me on stage. I did my minutes mm-hmm. and got off stage and went home. <laughs> That's that's dedication. That's dedication that's good. too. But that's I mean, good. but it's like you can find the funny if you're a comic can find the funny in anything, which is why a joke is a joke. Yeah. I mean, you could. I remember one time I was doing um doing a roast. All right. Mm. Mm-hmm. And this was back in '06. It was a while ago. Well before this. PC stuff started really taking off, but yeah, yeah. you could see some of it starting to build, uh, especially in college towns. But I was doing a roast, and I look at one of the comics, and I go, Look at you, man, dude, you got a higher blackhead count than the Million Man March. <laughs> and the crowd, like the comics are laughing, the crowd is silent until these two black football players from UL stand up mm-hmm. in the fourth row, walk up the aisle, and the whole crowd is just like gasps. Mm-hmm. And then one of them goes, my boy, that was some funny shit, and shakes my hand. Of course, I go, of course, I play it off to be really funny. I go, I thought I was going to die. But then that's when the crowd, it, it, it was, the funniest thing is watching white people whenever anything that can be considered offensive happens. Right. They need, because they need to look at right. something, somebody and go, wait, he made a Mexican joke. Do I see any... Do I see any brown people? Oh, they're laughing. I can okay. laugh. Right, right. You need permission to laugh. No, you don't, man. Well, no, but that's the thing, though, also... One of, laughter is actually one of the responses the body makes that people we still don't fully understand. Mm-hmm. But one of the common theories is it's actually a release of tension because of a be, after the fight and fight or flight reflex is mm-hmm. activated in our primal brains. We get which we get that setup. The joke sets us on edge, mm-hmm. builds up tension. It activates our fight and flight, <laughs> even though it's subconscious. There's no fight or flight. Right. It activates it in us, and the second we get that punchline, it releases that tension, and we laugh. Right. And because the thing is, it's why whenever you're in a situation like, let's say somebody just shot a gun at you, mm-hmm. what's the one thing a lot of people do once the situation resolves, especially if they haven't had to fight or run? Trying like, to light, lighten the mood by making a joke? Or just start laughing. Right. Just be glad you're It's a yeah. release of tension. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, the thing is, I've, been, I've always theorized that those people that have to that look sense. to see if it's okay, mm-hmm. they build up all that tension of, like, is it okay? And then they see... And then they're like, oh, and they can release it, and then that's when they laugh. Right. Now that's that's good. I can see that's a that's a good theory. I can dig it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. When I first started comedy, I'm a huge nerd. I started researching. I I read books on comedy, on comedy theory, on laughter itself. So your your parents supported? Um. Meh. <laughs> um, my dad only likes it when I tell jokes about him, but my dad's a complete egotist. So, okay. um, my mom has been to one of my sets. She really liked it. The, in- the interesting thing, my grandma was the biggest supporter. Uh, yeah, the grandmas are usually like that. She was such a grandma's I, I, I the still sweetest ladies in the world. I, lo- I lost her uh, in this um, this July. Oh. Yeah. Um, but. Oh yeah. 
No, June. Was it June? June. June 22nd. Okay. Yeah. But it was, um, she was a huge supporter. She even, I had one on my 21st birthday. Mm-hmm. I had a feature set on my 21st birthday. I, not that feature, headliner. Okay. And, like, everybody came out. And she came out. 86 year old woman came, well, 84, but 84 then. But mm-hmm. mid 80s woman coming out to Jefferson Street at 9 o'clock at night to go to one of my sets. And the best thing is my opening act got wasted and started <laughs> ranting about Cleveland steamers. Gross. Yes, it was disgusting, but he was wasted. And <laughs> then he gets off the stage, looks, and sees my grandma sitting and just goes, and runs up to me and goes, I'm so sorry, man, I forgot she was there. Oh, my God. And I walked over, I'm like, Dina, are you okay? Mm-hmm. She goes, oh, it's all right. I saw a Mexican hayride back in the day. And we're all just like, I don't know what that means, but she's like, okay. <laughs> yep. No, it was. But yeah, yeah, she was a big supporter. Well, that's good. That's good. So what's the uh, what's the top of the line end result for you? What you want to do with this thing? Um, I just love doing it. I mm-hmm. mean, if I can, I mean, I'm so busy right now. I'm working three jobs plus school. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. Plus the comedy. Plus yeah. It's just I don't like. There's so many open mics and so many shows throughout the throughout Louisiana now. Mm-hmm. But I just uh, problem is every one of them is when I work. Mm-hmm. And that's how it goes. Yeah. But uh, when I graduate, I'd love to you know get a job at a paper, or get a job writing somewhere, mm-hmm. and go to a city where I can focus on it yeah. and try and. I mean, it's never too late. I mean, Rodney Dangerfield took twelve years off. Yeah, no, it's never too late, back. man. It's never too late to get your dreams out, bro. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, that's a great one. Look up Rodney Dangerfield's uh, autobiography, mm-hmm. It Ain't Easy Being Me. Mm-hmm. Some of the most depressed, like, if you read the backstories of some of these great comedians, like, yeah. some of their, they had so much trauma. No, so I much bet. That's, bad what, that's stuff what makes them so good, though. Yeah. And, I mean, heck, there's, you, you, you're, and the weird thing is, Rodney puts some of his one liners. At the end of every one of his stories, he puts a one liner, mm-hmm. like, one of his jokes. Mm hmm. So you get this extremely depressing story, and then a really funny joke right after. And then a really depressing story, and it's just like, like you get a story about how he was molested when he was five, mm-hmm. and then you get, you know, you get a joke of like, uh, got arrested for drinking. Wake up the next morning, get taken in front of the judge. Judge says, "You ain't here for drinking." I say, "Okay, judge, when are we starting?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, yeah. So top three comedians mm. all time. Hmm. Well, I had to knock one down because of uh, in the news recently. He just oh, got a, <laughs> he oh, yeah. just got his mug shot. If you didn't yeah. see that, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yikes! But I I have to put Rodney as my number one. Okay, with a very close second is, is Seinfeld. Okay, and then that third spot's been all over the place. But since Cosby's been dropped out, I actually I'm leaning towards Hedberg. I was thinking that. I love Mitch Hedberg back. He's oh. like a machine gun. Oh my god, I love his stuff. And the, be- the 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 what it still stuck with me. I got tickets to go see him and Stephen Lynch in Houston on my senior year in high okay. school. My dad stopped me from going because I had a final. It, this was the show was Saturday and I, I had no a midterm Tuesday. Okay. And he was like, "Oh, you have to study for that. You can't go." I'm like. I can study Sunday and Monday. He goes, no, you need to be ready for that. You could always go see him later. He died two months later. Yeah. And I was like, that yeah. was so, ah, oh, it was. Now, he's really, like, his style is really cool. Well, the thing is. It's like, real short. He was also, if you read about him, it terrified yeah, him I being up that. on stage. I heard that. And it's just like, I mean, that's that, that's astounding. Too. Mm-hmm. It, it shows you. You can kind of see it if you look at you his, could, yeah, yeah, if you look at him. But, I mean, it shows you that stage fright that all that you can work around it mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, it, it Hedberg gave, gave me hope because I'm so awkward that mm-hmm. I could somehow figure out and of course I have I figured out how to make my awkwardness part of I just I'm looking at you now and I've known you for a little while now yeah but I'm looking at you and I think you could easily be in a, a Judd Apatow movie you know what I mean? <laughs> I got that. Uh, I got that pre uh, Green Hornet Seth Rogen. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I'm gonna smoke some pot. Uh, knock someone up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can definitely do that, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's cool, man. But I'm, hey, bro, I support you, man. No, I, I really hope that you make it to the top of the top, man. For real. Either that, or I mean, I'm also a big writer. I'm, I'm writing a fantasy novel. Man, keep it up, man. So, keep it yeah. up. You gonna get some? You gonna get some? Some fly shit out of one of them things. That's for real. That's for real. For real. Oh yeah. But um, but yeah, man. So yeah, like, let's uh. We're at the comic book shop. Yep. What are we reading at the comic book shop? Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'm still reading Chew. It's starting to wrap up. It's it's in its last last run. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and uh, you know, I've been reading that like crazy. I uh, I've actually been looking. Uh, I'm still reading Miss Marvel. It's continued from the uh, the big break mm-hmm. <laughs> after after Secret Wars, which you, is still what, going on. What are you watching? What am I watching? Ooh, okay. That's um. I just binged watched the final season of Phineas and Ferb just because. Oh, <laughs> um, Jessica Jones was amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't have Netflix. I'm oh. hearing da- Daredevil and Jessica Jones is on is on point. Oh. Need to borrow some of uh, Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I or need just to do that. bite the bullet and drop the eight bucks for a month yeah. and binge. <laughs> um, can oh, and did you see the pictures from the set of Daredevil season two? I uh, saw the the Punisher. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was Electra too, huh? Electra, and they got yeah. Punisher chaining Daredevil to the ground, huh? to the ground, and he's holding a gun. But mm-hmm. and if it's that Frank Miller part, or no, no, it wasn't Frank Miller. Who was it who wrote it? Oh, he wrote when when the Punisher came back after, uh, with War um, with the War Journal. Oh, I'm blanking on the name. That's gonna kill me. But there's a really crazy scene where Daredevil's trying to stop him, the mm-hmm. Punisher, from killing a mob boss. Okay. And Punisher knocks him out, chains him, except for one arm free, mm-hmm. to a chimney. Right, right, right. And puts a gun in his hand. Duct tapes a gun in his hand. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and when he wakes up, he's standing on a roof looking at the at the mobster, that, and he's got a sniper rifle. He goes, what is this? He goes, it's a gun. There's one bullet. One chance to stop me from killing, what's his name? My mob boss. But of course, if you do that, you're no better than me. Mm-hmm. He puts the gun up, takes aim. Daredevil's freaking out. He pulls the gun, points, click, 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 click. Mm-hmm. Punisher shoots the mobster, kills him. Right, right, turns right. around, goes, "You didn't think I was that stupid, <laughs> but you're not any different than me." And yeah. walks away. There you go. <laughs> oh, and it looks like they're gonna probably try and. That's re- a dope scene, man. Oh, I didn't, was- even, I didn't know about that. Oh yeah. And then of course we got our first pictures of a uh, of a uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. I didn't see that. Oh, I gotta pull it up. That costume <laughs> is amazing. It was in. Inter- it was the cover story for Entertainment Weekly. Is it a? Uh- so that's next year? That's this year? Yes. No, no. Next year. Well, in two days it'll right. be this year. Right, right, uh, right. In November. Okay. Two days, the three days before my birthday, we're getting Doctor Strange. Do you so feel... That's, that's a beautiful Christmas present. Do you feel that's oversaturation? Um, you kind of... Well, not really, because, hey, because... They was thinking Marvel's, Ant-Man was going to be the failure. And but it look succeeded. how amazing that... Right. Here's the thing. The thing about the Marvel movies that people aren't realizing is... Uh, with the exception of Avengers, which even though people didn't like Avengers two as much as Avengers one, I liked one, Avengers two a lot. Right, but not as much as people went for right. Avengers one. It was the same type of action extravaganza kind of movie. Mm-hmm. That's what Avengers is. Mm-hmm. Ant Man, that's a heist movie. Mm-hmm. Iron Man is Iron Man. That was just, it, to, I mean, Tony Stark, or yeah, you know, and uh, Robert Downey Jr. for Tony Stark. That's just there. You know, mm-hmm. I mean. It, it, it's like, like I'm saying, I'm really excited for Deadpool, even though it's a Fox movie. Yeah. But it's mostly because Fox is keeping a hands-on approach, and Ryan Reynolds and his, and the crew, who are all huge Deadpool fans, run all this, and mm-hmm. that's why you can see, like you can see it in the trailers. Well, if that's the case, then why Deadpool was some bullshit in the Wolverine? Because Fox had, the, Fox was in charge of that. Okay. Deadpool happened because. There was test footage, and they just showed it off at Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Somebody leaked it. Uh, yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, right. It was all 3D animated. It was just test footage. Mm-hmm. Somebody leaked it. I really think it was either Ryan or one of the or the director or the writer. Mm-hmm. Um, because Ryan Reynolds has been trying for Deadpool and have a Deadpool movie for over a decade, mm-hmm. and Fox has been against it. The amount of people that watched that test footage when it was leaked on YouTube and the amount of demand caused Fox to go, okay, here's your money, 
do it, but we're not in charge of this. They've taken a very hands-off approach to it. <laughs> and you can and honestly you can see that it's it's doing well. I mean we saw what happened when Fox took a very hands-on approach with Fantastic Four. That was Fan a, four stick four. Bro, that was a bunch of dog shit right there. <laughs> yeah. That was a bunch of bull. Oh yeah. I feel sorry. I'm glad they're not making a sequel and I'm wasting time with that. Because I was gonna see it. If you make a Marvel movie, I'm gonna see it. I just avoided it. My buddy Jared went and I, he just like don't. I'm like, yeah, I was I I was kinda eh. You know, it's like how I'm kind of eh about Batman v Superman. Oh yeah, bro. I'm not. I'm gonna watch it. I'm. I'm not. I don't care. I don't care at all. My uh, one of my coworkers at the at the TV station I work at. Mm-hmm. He's a big. He's a DC fan. Yeah. And I'm like, if you're in the copycat league right now, you know they're just trying to copy, and that is gonna be. It might be. It's gonna make a lot of money, but it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna be good. My main thing is David Goyer was head writer for this, and he's all everything he's touched has turned to crap. Mm-hmm. He was a co-writer for Man of Steel and the third Batman, Dark Knight movie, mm-hmm. the third Nolan Batman, and you saw the quality of that was not on par with Dark Knight or Batman Begins. And Man of Steel had all the problems that everyone saw. Yeah. Goyer's in charge now. Mm-hmm. Nolan didn't touch the script to this mm-hmm. time. No Nolan involvement. I'm not, look, I'm not looking like forward to it. Would you like to know what the two movies that David Goyer wrote by himself are? What the? Blade Trinity and Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. i tell you this. Out of the two Ghost Riders, I like that one. But it, that's only because Nicolas Cage just went nuts in that movie. <laughs> right, right, um, right. Check this. All right, uh, Dan's about to pull up uh, the Stephen Strange, the Doctor Strange costume. That's nice. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah, and, I mean, look at that. They add the graying to the hair. So yeah, still got that's the gray good. going. He's uh, got his own layer going. All right. Yo, yeah. it's a beautiful thing, man, this, this expanded universe. It's really nice. But, yo, y- um, that's you- the cover for Entertainment Weekly this week. That's dope. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Like I, I was skeptical about that one though. I ain't gonna front. Oh, but I mean, everyone was skeptical about Ant Man, and look yeah, how true. Ama- yeah, 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 amazing yeah. that was. Also, it, it, it just shows the PC people. You remember Luis from Ant Man, the the sidekick? Yeah, 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 yeah. People, made a fit about that. Bullshit. People made a fit about that, and he goes, "I based the character of my cousin, brought his cousin out, and his cousin talks just like that." Right. And it's just like, how is it racist when it's literally my cousin? Right. People just want to fight. Yeah, People just, just want to be they upset. They want to be offended. People want to be offended so they can scrap. But I think your, your friend wanted to get some, huh? Oh, he was just telling me, uh, tell, I'll be back in two seconds. I just got to add who won. Okay. <laughs> like I said, they're doing a tournament. I'm about to ask them which uh, card game they're playing. I think it's Magic. But yeah, man. No, the MCU is going to be it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. But uh, what, what game are they playing over there? Oh, we got a... Uh, we got Magic Draft going that's what on right I, That's what I saw. So they're that's drafting some uh, Battle for Zendikar right now. That's what I've been telling the, the listeners over here. Oh, yeah. We got some Magic going on. We got people playing uh, X-Wing over here. And we got uh, Warhammer behind us. Right, 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 right. Got some more board game group behind <laughs> us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, a live, it's a live one at the comic book shop today. Oh, yeah. It's a live one. Yeah, well, you're usually here on what, Monday, Tuesday? No, when I when I do the podcast, it's usually Thursday. Thursday. That's, yeah, yeah that's Thursday. a much quieter time until about yeah. 7 when the War Machine people get here. Right, right. And I usually do it around 6, so I end about 7. Yeah. But um, but it's cool. No, I'm actually I mean, I'm actually digging it, and I hope the ambiance ain't too bad. But uh, yeah. I don't think it is. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, well, the, the, the good thing about this store, and also the bad thing is, someone could be about 20, 15 feet away from you. You can't hear them when they're yelling. Like, right. Unless it's a child. Then the chi- a small child starts yelling, and you hear them everywhere. That's piercing. Though. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that, that's, that's out there. That's piercing. Yep. But that's good, man. No, I'm excited about it. It's like... Uh, I mean, really excited about Captain America. Oh, that's gonna be oh, that's gonna be epic. That's we're, like we're, a, oh, this spring's gonna be amazing. We got Deadpool in February. We got Cap in uh, in uh, May. Hell, I'll even even though I'm not excited about it, it's just I gotta at least try and watch Batman. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna oh, check it regardless. out, even though I know I'm gonna look at it. Oh, that that Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor. Just Ooh, like, oh yuck! It's so bad. Ooh yuck! Yeah. Ooh, and I like him. Oh, he's that's a great actor. Oh. That was awful directing. That's, I'm, I, I, I internally I feel that this is going to be the. There's a hundred people they could have picked. The, up. the 
the Jesse. Uh, this is gonna be the uh, the uh, Anakin Skywalker of like an- like that. Oh, that Anakin from Episode Two of the <laughs> Sand. It's good. Like him. Oh, I am. I am Lex Luthor. Ooh, it's like that, that. Those lines we saw in that trailer make Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor look subtle. Like, yeah. oh my God. That's real bad. But no, I'm really excited about Captain America. That feels like Avengers 2.5. Yes. You know, that feels really, really good. And we're getting we're getting Black Panther. Black Panther's gonna be in there. Winter Soldier's back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Spider Man. Spidey. Yeah. Spider Man. Ant Man. Ant Man gonna be in there. Bugs everywhere. Yeah. Um, Black Widow. There, there's there's just bugs everywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not really excited about Deadpool though. I ain't front. I I'm really excited just because I love that character, and it looks like Reynolds and that crew. I know that the director and the writer are both huge fans. Mm-hmm. And I, the the thing that cemented it for me is in the Comic-Con trailer. The mm-hmm. one that got leaked but hasn't been out, actually. There's a scene where Deadpool is cursing. And at one point, he in this long string of cursing, he ends it by going, God damn it, life elf. <laughs> the fact that they cursed out the creator of Deadpool in it just... Who, by the way, life elf's a hack. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> and, but the fact that they cursed him out is just, I was like, oh. and then every every joke that the fact that we don't know what jokes are in there because every trailer has different jokes for the same scene, right? Is great. And again, it's, it's a it's a Marvel movie, it's a comic movie. I'm gonna check it out anyway. I'm I'm excited for it because it looks like they're do they did the character justice. Is it gonna be? Is it a separate universe? It's in it the like it's it. in the X Men universe. But they got a different guy playing uh, Colossus. Right. Okay. But it's still the same Colossus. It's the same Colossus, just a different actor. Okay. It's 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 Fox. They can't keep their universes straight no matter what. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I mean, if we all remember that Fox is, are the people who went, eh, Star Wars won't sell that much. Here you go, George. You can have all the licensing rights. Right. <laughs> Did you see it? What? Oh Wars. yes. Yeah. Yes. Twice. <laughs> I'm not a big Star Wars fan, so like it was, it was, it was beautiful to see, but I don't really know what's going on, you know. So the um, I, didn't, I, I couldn't appreciate as much. I huge Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. I brought a character from level one to max level in the in the Star Wars D20 game over the past twelve years. Okay, which is the D and D Star Wars. Right, 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 right. <laughs> she, she Star Crusher, a, scoundrel, ace pilot, gunslinger. Mm, that's cool. Yep, that's cool. The one who kept who, who flew the ship and kept everybody from just being a whole party of Jedi blading everything and throwing things around with the Force. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, man. For a spontaneous eleventh hour podcast episode, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, are we almost done? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. We're running out of uh, time, if, man. If we go over, if you also say, you know, uh, you talk about gaming, like yeah. video games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been. Uh, I just finished the Game of Thrones game. Uh, what game is that? The one for Telltale, the guys who made the Walking Dead. Is game. it a? It's a PC game. It's PC. Uh, it's PC and console, okay. with the exception of Nintendo ones. Okay. Um, it's one of those point-and-click adventures like Telltale makes. Brutal. It's hard. Not hard, just story brutal. Mm. They connect you to these characters so fast, and then just like Game of Thrones, yeah. kill them all. Oh. <laughs> oh. And then, and you're like, you feel like, oh, like you're, you're like, oh my god, I, if I'd done this differently, I could have saved Save them. them. <laughs> Sometimes that's true, and then other times it doesn't matter. Right. You could do whatever; it didn't matter. That you, they were gonna get a knife through the throat no matter what. That's you a did. good. That's a good series, though. Game yeah. of Thrones. Oh yeah. It was a good show. Yeah. Well, I, I've, I've read all the books. I'm waiting on that. Waiting on George. Yeah. Come on, George. <laughs> <laughs> no, and the problem is the series. Like, I can't watch movies and television series that I've read the books for Mm -hmm. and they're following it because it's just like I know what's going to happen it's like there's no excitement for me you know there's like what's going to happen next I'm just uh, of course they could just pull an Aragon and just not follow anything and like then bastardize it and Mm. just be like no no this is awful (laughs) No, I can dig it. But uh, that, and I've been playing some Final Fantasy XIV yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. More of a PC or a console guy? I have, a, I have an Alienware PC, I've got a PS4, a Wii U. I don't have Xbox One. Okay. But, I mean, 
That's because of money and the fact that literally Xbox One is only exclusive. It's a bunch of old rare games, which I have like a, a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Killer Instinct, which I have the original, and Halo. Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to buy a console for one game. No, yeah, that's right. That's right. I will. <laughs> I like Halo, and I can't play it nowhere else. We'll be right back for the final segment. Oh, yeah. All right. Another customer. But it's all good. This was a lot of fun. This was a lot of, this was a great podcast episode. I hope the audio wasn't too bad. Um, it shouldn't have been too bad, but it was a lot of fun. I'm glad he was able to do it. Oh, yeah. No, I've done, I've done a lot of podcasts. I did, uh, I did, uh, got some friends who also do podcasting here in Lafayette. They do Insignificast. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a fun little one. <laughs> that's a good one. That's and a good uh, I, I love that. I loved doing that one back in the day with my buddy Ern, who we'd be guests on there every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Came up with a great one. Um, opened up one for them, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Keith, the guy who runs it, lets me say, uh, "I said, welcome to Insignificast. It's like Catcher in the Rye, except by Rye you mean gay bar, <laughs> <laughs> and if by Catcher you mean Urn." <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I was man. sitting there and I was like, oh, I got the perfect intro. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, final segment I like yeah. to do uh, before we wrap the show up is a segment I call 4321. Okay. Four questions, okay. 10 answers. All right. Wait, what? Yeah, check it out. Okay, and where's the 3, 2, and 1 coming? Watch, you'll see. Okay, because 4, 3, 2, 1 adds right. up to 10. 10, yeah. yeah. Okay. You're going to ruin it. You ruined the, the, oh. the surprise. <laughs> Sorry, you threw a math problem at me. I had to do it. Oh, basic math, okay, net 20 plus 5 is right, oh, 25. 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Question number 4. Okay. Um, What, the, what is my 4, 3, 2, 1? I don't even remember anymore. Oh, hit oh. the Google Doc. No, no, hit the Google Doc. I was messing around. Uh, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, you so I have to give four answers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're stranded on a desert island. Okay. Everything's taken care of, but you only got four albums. What are those four albums? Oh, okay. The rest of your life, four albums. Oh, that's a difficult. Okay, first I have to I have to bring that uh that Rodney Dangerfield album. Okay. That first Rodney Dangerfield. That, that, that's, that's a right that's a, uh, that's a little um. A little screw in there because yeah. uh, it's, mo- it's mostly music album, but you're you doing a comedy album. That's good. Yeah. Um, a little curveball I'd over have there. To, one of my favorite albums, which a lot of people are kind of like, what? <laughs> is uh, Primus's Antipop. Okay. Love that album. You know the name of the uh, Rodney Dangerfield album? Oh, that would be. Uh, it ain't easy being. <laughs> okay. No, no, it's No Respect. It's Son of No Respect. Okay. That was it. Son of No Respect. That All was, right. Yeah, um, it ain't easy being me. It was his biography, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, autobiography. Um, so yeah, I gotta go. Uh, Anti pop. I'm probably also throwing Queen's greatest hits, just cause Queen's Queen. You know? Yeah, yeah, I can dig it. Um, if you can't tell, I'm a huge classic rock kind of guy. Time out. Yeah. Everybody tries to cheat. No greatest hits. No no greatest hits. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You almost oh. had me. You almost had me. Oh, I gotta, okay. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't specify. Uh, that. I didn't. I didn't. Everybody does it though. Yeah. Well, you, you, you got to specify the right. rules of the game. Right, right, right. Oh. Okay then. If we're going single albums, mm. then I'm gonna have to go. Wish you were here by Pink Floyd. Okay. So that's two we've got because Queen got knocked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got three. You got your Primus. Oh yeah, three because of yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that fourth one's gonna be tough. Mm-hmm. But. You know what? Just cause it will throw you again, I'll throw in. Uh, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name now. Wow. Oh, uh, the thousand year man and the uh, the two thousand year old man in the year two thousand. Okay. It's a Mel Brooks album. Okay. Wow. It's all about Mel Brooks being interviewed, and he's playing a two thousand year old man. Okay. On the eve of two thousand, the year two thousand. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yes, and it's all about his life. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. All right. Question number three: Top three cartoons. Oh, oh, why do you have to hit me with that? Mm. Okay, I gotta go. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Okay. I, especially since I just got the uh, the entire series on Blu-ray for Christmas. Okay. Um. 
Okay. I have a bad habit when I'm thinking to chew and then that'll ruin the audio. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's all right. Chew on my thumb. Uh, I'll probably also put... um, Just because it's so ridiculous and funny. Phineas and Ferb, I just finished it. Okay. That show just each season got better. (laughs) To the point where you're like... And then it ends and I was actually like, I'm crying over... Cool. Cried over a cartoon show. What the heck? Um, and then I gotta go South Park. All right. I gotta go South Park. South Park is good. Good answer. Yep. Um, number two. Okay. Two people of the opposite sex. Two celebrities of the opposite sex you would spend a weekend with. Oh. Okay. Just because she's really cute and. She did amazing in Star Wars. I gotta go Daisy Ridley. Okay. Who's Ray, that? That's, the, that's, that's Ray. Okay. That's okay. Ray. Um, and then... That's always, that's always a hard one. Um, I actually did spend <laughs> spend a weekend with a celebrity once, so that was... It's, it doesn't hold as much as she, she's awesome. I, I still hang you know, hang with her uh, okay. at times, but I'll just say just because it's awesome to, uh, and she's hilarious. Ingrid Nilsson. She's uh, she's a voice actress from Canada. She's what's her name? Ingrid Nilsson. Okay. Uh, she's an actress and voice actress in Canada. What's she uh, she's, she's what's been, she done? She's Maud Pie, the the Pie Sisters and My Little Pony. Okay. She's been on Supernatural. She was the narrator. Oh, I'm, she's gonna kill me that I forgot the name. She she narrated a horror series. Okay. Up there that won a couple awards. Um, really great actress, also a yogi. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. And I just and she's she's a blast to hang with. Yeah, I bet. She sounds like she's cool. Yep. Question number one. Mm-hmm. One place on planet Earth that you haven't been that you want to go. Oh. Number one. Japan. Yeah, that's mine Japan. too. That's mine too. Gotta be Japan. Yeah. I, they're just it looks so cool. There man. was also London, but I, I knocked that off the list. Okay, so well, that's I've been, good. I've been to England. I've been to you know, been to the honky motherland. <laughs> <laughs> Made my pilgrim. I'm mad. I'm offended. I'm offended. You're offended that I. I'm offended. Racist. Oh man. <laughs> that's so, good though. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Japan's my number one too. My number one too. It's like it's like the future. And I'd it, say China. And it seemed like a close second. Oh yeah, really? I I just it, Asian culture is so different while still meshing along in the past hundred years. They seem years. to be really nice in Japan. Like really um, nice people. Yes and no. They have a they have a very friendly tourism industry, but they don't like it when you stick around. <laughs> oh, I can dig it. That yeah. makes sense. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. They have a whole word that's a negative for, called gaiji. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend Ernie, uh, he has a, um, his, uh, I think his, his wife or his fiance or something lives out there and he has a baby out there. Mm-hmm. So he goes over there and they call him gaiji every now and then. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's the pejorative for he's a, he's a he's a white guy. Yep. But, um, but yeah, man, that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It, it was a lot last. of fun. I can't believe I was able to multitask like this. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. Um, you got any social media, anything you want um, to give out? I'm on Twitter, uh, PallyDan7779. It's P-A-L-L-Y-D-A-N-7779. Okay. Um, and Dan Boudreaux on uh, on Facebook. Okay. Also, I'm the PallyDan on YouTube, but I haven't put much on YouTube in a while. Okay. Just, all right. As always, you can follow me on Twitter. That's Grasshopper GP, Grasshopper GP on Instagram. Both of those uh, same way: Twitter, Instagram, Grasshopper GP, spelled normally. Um, send me an email at GrasshopperGP at yahoo.com if you want to do any types of sponsorships or any types of advertisement, or you just have nice things to say about the podcast. I really appreciate it. GrasshopperGP at yahoo.com. You are listening to this on Grasshopper GP. Official on the YouTube account. Grasshopper GP official with three S's and Grasshopper because when I made the account, I couldn't spell. Grasshopper GP with three S's. Grasshopper GP official. Three S's in the official um official YouTube account. Uh, and that's it, man. Aqua Method Podcast, episode 25. It's your boy GP, Dan. Nice. Y'all be good. <laughs>